and welcome to another episode in the Delta Conveyance Deep Dive video series, where we take a look at topics related to the Delta Conveyance project and try to shed some light on some of the issues concerning water in the Delta and beyond. Our subject today is the state water project, water allocations. Simply put, who receives water from the state water project and who gets to decide how much water? Of course, the question of who has access to California's water supply is anything but simple. It's as old as the state itself and the subject of countless books, laws, and lawsuits. In fact, it's such a complicated subject that we've decided to tackle it in two parts. Today's conversation focuses on operations and regulations. And next time we'll take a look at what happens downstream, so to speak, with water agency contracts and the complicated business of water transfers. So today here to help us with the first part is someone who almost literally has her hands on the faucets. State Water Project Chief of Water Operations, Molly White. Hi, Molly, welcome to Deep Dive. Hi, Pat, thank you for having me. Glad to have you. So before we get started, tell us what you do here at DWR. Is it really that much of a stretch to say that you're the one with your hands turning the taps on and off? Well, I don't physically have my fingers on the um, on the knobs, if you will, but we do um, play a big part in the planning and scheduling of water movement throughout the state. So my name is Molly White and I'm Chief of Water Operations for the State Water Project. And um, my team is tasked with short-term planning for water operations for the State Water Project. And some of our key responsibilities that we are involved with include planning and scheduling releases from Lake Oroville to the Feather River, as well as planning and scheduling um, our diversions from the South Delta at our export facility, as well as developing uh, water supply plans for um, the state water project. Okay, so now let's dive in. To get a sense of the scale of the operation, here are some of the basic numbers of who is served by the state water project in California. More than 27 million thirsty Californians, three quarters of a million acres of thirsty farmland and 29 separate public water agencies or sometimes called PWAs. So Molly, take us through some of the fundamentals of your job. What are some of the big considerations um, when it comes to water supply planning and moving water around the state? You bet. There's many considerations that um, we take into account when we are developing our water supply um, allocation uh, studies. Um, I'll talk about a few of those here today. Um, one significant component is hydrology, um, and that includes not only rainfall, but also snowpack and um, the runoff uh, forecasts that we receive that um, show how much water and tell us how much water is coming into our reservoirs, as well as how much water is moving through the system as it runs off from the snowpack as it melts in the spring. We also take into consideration uh, flood control requirements for Lake Oroville, conditions throughout the state water project as a whole, whether it be in our reservoirs and our contractor, um, our delivery, water delivery demands. And um, the one significant aspect as well is that we do not operate alone in the Delta. Um, we jointly operate and coordinate our state water project operations with the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, um, our federal partner, if you would, who operate the um, Central Valley project. In addition, we also take into consideration, say, our senior water rights um, holders in the Feather River and their water supply and their water demands as well as another key component are um, the environmental regulations that do govern our diversions from the South Delta. So speaking about environmental regulations, how do these affect how much the state water project can divert in the South Delta? 
Um, let me start by just expanding on what type of environmental regulations that we do have that govern um, some of our operations, especially is, as they relate to the Delta. First, we have our water rights permit, which is issued um, by the State Water Resources Control Board. And we have um, water quality and flow standards that are required for that permit. We also have our incidental take permit. Uh, we received that this year from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And that sets forth flow requirements in the Delta that um, are for the protection of state listed species, as well as we have biological opinions that were issued in 2019 by the National, National Marine Fisheries Service, as well as the US Fish and Wildlife Service. And those also um, set forth flow requirements um, for the protection of federal listed species. So we begin our water supply planning for the allocations in November of each year. In December, we release the initial allocation and by May typically is when our final allocation is determined. Because the allocation is determined based upon a, a conservative dry hydrology and conditions at the time, it's important to update our planning. So every month we do update our studies to include a changing snowpack um, and those increased inflows that may come along with um, in the forecast due to the additional snowpack accumulation. As the graphic details, um, We've got 20 years of historical state water project allocations on the graphic. Um, every column refers is a different color and it refers to the water year type. Um, as Pat, you mentioned, the California's hydrology is very unpredictable and you can see how that's displayed on this graphic. Um, we've got five water year types shown, wet, above normal, below normal, dry and critical. And so as we've marched through the years, we've seen drier years, say in the last 12 years, especially with the drought period of about 2013 to 2015. In fact, in um, 2014, as, show on, as shown on the graphic, we were at, at our lowest allocation of 5%. But not only has the drier years impacted the state water project water supply, also in, 20, um, in 2008 with the onset um, of the biological opinions also has impacted the water supply allocation. And this has just been a result of just limited South Delta diversions um, beginning in 2008. So now let's move on to the Delta and the proposed Delta conveyance project. If the tunnel is built, will it allow DWR to divert more water than is currently allowed by the State Water Board? As we know, this kind of goes to the heart of the debate about the pros and cons of the project. No, Pat, the, the tunnel would not allow the state to divert more water than what is already allowed um, under our current water rights permit that has been issued by the State Water Resources Control Board. With the onset or the operation of the tunnel, um, just like we do now, and I, I've explained, there's many key considerations that we take into account when we do our water supply allocation planning. Um, that rigorous process will still continue and will still account for um, environmental regulations, hydrology considerations, and also just um, our joint operations with the Central Valley Project. So if the tunnel is built, how would it change the way that we're able to move water around and through the Delta? Sure. Um, this additional diversion location um, in the North Delta would provide more operational flexibility um, that we don't have right now. Um, there's also, with the proposed locations, there are potentially less conflicts with fisheries regulations that exist currently in the South Delta. The tunnel would also provide additional opportunities to capture additional stormwater that may not have been possible um, without the tunnel. 
And lastly, the, the tunnel would provide a reliable water supply should there be a catastrophic, say, levee failure in the Delta due to a seismic event. Well, thank you, Molly, for giving us that overview of water supply allocation, planning, and regulations for the state water project. I'll let you get back to turning those taps. Thank you, Pat. It was nice talking to you today. And I hope that you will join us for part two when we'll be talking to the chief of the water management group at the State Water Project Analysis Office, BG Highland, about the state water project, public water agencies, and the complicated business of water transfers. Thanks for watching.